ঠিক আছে তো কিছু করার নেই এবার শোনা যাচ্ছে কি আমি বলতে চাইছি যে আই হ্যাভ রিটেন দিস স্টেটমেন্ট দিস স্টেটমেন্ট ইস ক্লিয়ার টু অল দেয়ার শুড নট বি এনি স্টোরেজ ইন দা ইন্ডাক্টার হুম আফটার ওয়ান কমপ্লিট সাইকেল or period okay so that means whatever the energy stored in the inductor in on period should dissipate in the off period is that clear now i am asking you how to compute the energy which is being stored in the inductor is my question clear হলো in the on period is equal to the average value of the current in the off period isn't it so if i take some average value if i take some average value like this so if this is the i average so that will be same for the on period and off period so that means in the on period the energy is energy is vd into current into p on so this is the energy in the on period okay <clears throat> and in the off period what is the energy v0 minus vd v0 minus vd into t of into i average i have p of p of okay so from that we can write what we can write from this so we can write this vt if we take a vd as common so we'll get p on plus p of bringing the vd another vd part to the left side so here the v0 into t of will remain in the right half okay so that means the output by input what will be the expression expression will be t on plus t of t0 minus vd that's a t on by t of by t of is it okay so what is t on plus t of total time period total time period so total time period by t of Now what is T of? T of is T minus T on. Okay. Now if we divide numerator and denominator by T, then what you will get? One minus D. 
So it is nothing but one by one minus D. Okay, so this is how we can prove that V0 is one by one minus D into VD. So this is the expression which relates the input and output voltage in case of boost converter. Okay, now generally we know that D is less than one. So if D is less than one, what about the V0? If D less than one, so the denominator will be always less than one. So that means this factor will always be greater than one. So that means V0 will always be greater than VD. So that is that was our objective and that is fulfilled. Clear? So this is yes, how sir. we are getting the step up converter, DC DC step up converter or boost DC DC converter. Okay, so this equation what is, is the efficiency? Huh? Efficiency of this inverter. Efficiency means what do we so like transformer we have ninety-five to ninety-eight percent efficiency. No, no, that efficiency depends on the switch you are using, the component you are using. Here the efficiency will be calculated depends on the switching power loss and power loss in other components. Now the inductor will not have any ideal inductor, isn't it? So that means inductor will uh, consume a very small amount of power loss because practical inductor always contains some resistance. So there will be some I square L loss. Okay, as you have to use the inductor in this case, unlike the buck converter. For buck converter, you have a choice. If you don't want to uh, filter out the ripple, you may not use the inductor. But here you have to induct it. You have to use the inductor. So if the inductor contains some finite resistance, so there will be power loss. And also in the switch, what type of switch you will consider, whether it is BJT or MOSFET or IGBT or Iristor, depending on your selection, the power loss will vary. And power loss also depends on the switching frequency. Okay, so that means this, this will be the factors which will be required to calculate the efficiency. Will not say a general expression of efficiency. Clear? Any, any other point you want to raise? No, sir. Okay, so next one is buck boost converter. Buck boost converter. <clears throat> now, here also the circuit will be similar. Only the positions of inductor, switch, and the diode will change. Here, the inductor will be placed in the front branch. Here the switch will be connected in series with the input. Okay, and diode will be connected in opposite direction. So as it is a DC, so you can use polarized electrolytic capacitor, which I have drawn here. It is one straight line and another bend line. So it means the electrolytic capacitor or polarized capacitor because even your application is mainly DC. 
So suppose you have a registry mode, only any load you can use. So I have done a registry only. So this is the configuration for a back boost conversion. Here also we'll take the same thing. We'll take the inductor power, inductor energy, and inductor voltage. When the switch is closed, let us take when the switch is closed. So what is the in which direction or what is the inductor voltage? BD. And this is the polarity, isn't it? Okay. Now when the switch is off, let us take the path of the current. Can you tell me anybody that if the switch is off, then how the current will flow? To the inductor. Yeah. Through the load and capacitor, it will return back to the diode. So, in the first half, this was the current direction. What will be the current direction in the second half for inductor? So it will be same, but it will uh, go through the diode. It will be same, okay, but it will go through the diode. So that means, should I draw like this? Yes, sir, yes. Is it okay? Yes, sir. So therefore, we have we have mentioned the voltage, polarity output voltage, polarity magnitude. Okay. So that means, what will be the VL in that case? What will be the real in that case? We not. Huh? We are, we are, there is no voltage, we are. Minus V not. Minus V not. So we should write V minus VL equals to V not. Because inductor voltage itself will change, isn't it? And that becomes V not. So if the polarity is like this, so that will contradict our assumed VL direction. Okay, so that means if that is VL, so it will be a minus VL, which will be equals to V naught. Or we can write VL equals to minus V naught. Both you can write. So whatever the diode voltage drop, uh, we are negligible for why we are not considering it. That you are neglecting. Otherwise, that will come in the earlier oh, okay, okay. Also, yeah. that will come into the account. That is very small, okay, around so 0. 0.3 to 0. 0.7 volt. Okay, so that we are neglecting. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I think it's clear. If that is the case, then again we'll do the same thing. What is the thing? That is the energy balance. What is the energy balance equation here? Follow. Here it will be VD in the in the on period it will be VD into I average into T on equals to 
minus v0 not v v average v0 into t of into of, i average t of t of okay so from that we can write minus v0 by vd equals to what t on by t off isn't it or t off by t on Yeah. Okay. Now, what we can write about T of T of again, like the previous one, we can write this T minus T on, where T is the time period. And <laughs> if we uh, if we now substitute by sorry, if we now divide the numerator and denominator both by T. Like the previous boost converter, so we'll get T on by T on by T. Okay, so what it means? It means D divided by one minus D. Yeah, the negative sign tells us the change in. Output voltage polarity. Okay. Otherwise, it will. What does it do? Let us see that we know that D is always less than equals to one. But if we split again the two range in two ranges, if we split it, so one is less than one. But greater than 0.5. Another is greater than zero, less than 0.5. So two ranges are there. So take the first range, take any value. Suppose 0.75. And here in this range, you just take 0.25. So, what will be the value of d by one minus d in the first case? Anybody? Anybody? Quick. Three. So it will be three, and the second case. Anything else? One by three. It is one by three. So that means here your V output will become three VD. Here the V output becomes one by three. VD. So, what we can say about this? What type of converter it is? For the first case, A case. Tell me. Boost converter. First one is the boost converter, and this one is the buff converter. So that means by using a same converter, you can get both the operation step up as well as step down. Boost as well as back operation, depending on the value of the duty ratio, whether it is less than 0.5 or more than 0.5. If it is more than 0.5, then you will get boost operation. If it is less than 0.5, then you will get the back operation. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So it's very easy now. You just check uh, how we are getting all this. Actually, if we can now sum up all this converter, then you will see. Think about the first case where you have the switch here. Okay, you have the diode here. 
and you have the inductor here then you have capacitance or capacitance is optional because that is to filter out the ripple only voltage ripples so this was the circuit for your what type of converter it is buck converter so this is a buck converter so this is d d this is c and this is load okay clear now what i will do uh, i will change it here here and this will bring here are you getting so this is suppose this is position number 1 this is position number 1 this is position number 2 and this is position number 3 okay so i will shift the inductor to position number 1 switch to position number 2 and the diode to position number 3 and if i redraw here by changing their position relative positions what i am getting i am getting this sorry there is a capacitor and we have the load so here you have the switch inductor and diode so if this is buck converter what about the second converter by changing their relative positions boost converter ha huh? boost converter so this is the boost converter only so what we did we have just changed the relative position of inductor diode and the switch that's all clear now again what i will do what we will do when the uh, the position we have to change to get the voltage converter okay so only we have to interchange the position of inductor and the switch okay so if we have the boost converter only we have to change it here and the inductor will come here and the diode will be reversed okay by that you will get just a minute okay so this will be the switch this will be the inductor and diode will be reversed like this so this gives us the buck boost one okay so that means we are basically having a three terminal device so this is basically a three terminal device and by using by changing the relative positions of three uh, elements in this three terminal device we can get buck boost and buck boost converter clear yes. <clears throat> any point you have so we discussed hmm bolo the capacitor is missing in last one yeah capacitance is uh, you can keep there to filter out the voltage dip.
Anything else? No. Okay. Now uh, try to generalize the energy valence equation. Now in the first case, what is the inductor voltage? If the switch is on, what about the inductor voltage? Anybody? It is Bd minus V0. Yes, Bd minus. Bd minus V0 into T on. Okay. Clear. Minus or equals to. Yes. You can write equals to. Equals to. Equals to what? If the switch is off, that condition then minus V0, isn't it? What is the inductor voltage in that case? Okay. Or we can write simply by bringing the minus part in the left half, we can write this equals to zero. So that means our general expression is sum of inductor voltage into the time is zero. So this should be maintained for all. So this is called the energy valence and sometimes also called the flux valence equation. Okay, in the second case, what was the equation? It is, well, Vd into T on minus V0 minus Vd into T of close to zero. And the last one, it is Vd into T on plus V0 into minus V0 plus V0 T of equals to zero. Huh? Monday mention God, I say one of them. Monday, eleven hour. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So let us go back to this. So is it clear, this energy balance equations? Hmm? So always yes, you, you have to maintain this energy balance equation. Now, uh, actually what we are doing, everywhere we have T on and T off, only the coefficient which we are multiplying with T on and T off, that is getting varied. So in one combination, we have Vd and V0 in the last combination. In the first combination, we have Vd minus V0 and V0. In the second combination, we have Vd and V0 minus Vd. So that means if you think about this, there may be other combination as well, isn't it? Are you getting what I'm, I want to 
tell you that all this can be changed to get different different converters it may not be bug boost or bug boost maybe other than that other than this okay so let me go to a interesting thing that i want to share with you suppose this which i want to tell you so that uh, this is uh, basically a three terminal device or you can say three terminal switching cell by changing their relative positions we can get these combinations in one combination we are getting uh, reduced voltage in one we are getting increased voltage in another we are getting both the reduced step up and step down voltage so this i already discussed now if we want to generalize this flux balance equation what i will get is like uh, 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 typically like this okay so that means we have some flux balance or energy balance equation where there will be either d or 1 minus d because what is d d is basically p on because what is d d is basically t on by t so that means that is d only so in our flux balance equation if we divide both the terms by t we'll get d and 1 minus d are you getting this or not okay let me uh, come to this before that i am just giving you this, this expression suppose what we have we have some function which is the function of this vd and v0 and then we have p on then again we have some function then these two may be different function that is also a function of either vd v0 and that is multiplied with p of and that is equals to 0 this is the expression we are getting for all these converters now if we divide both by t the first one will give me the duty cycle directly and what about the second one second one, one is nothing d. but 1 minus d isn't it are you getting this so what is p of by t what is that it is nothing but T minus, one man, T minus T on by. by T, that is 1 minus. So that I have written there. Okay, so this VD is basically our input voltage. And this V0 is basically a voltage across some capacitor. If we have a multiple capacitor, then we can have VC1, VC2 like this. If we have multi-port, so here, here we have only two port. If we have multi-port network, then we can get one input and multiple outputs. In that case, we have to use different capacitor, VC1, VC2, etc. Like this. So therefore, as a general expression, we can write the flux balance equation like this. Is that clear? Okay. So I will definitely share these slides to you. Now, this is how the combination may vary. If we have two variables, like the case which we are discussing right now, where we have two variables, one input voltage, another output voltage. Okay, so that means how many total combination we'll get? Four plus four. If we have single variable, 
only vd and v0 then we will get four variation if we use this combination vd plus v0 vd minus v0 then you will get another four combinations so as a whole we'll get eight combinations okay and these are the combinations 8 into 8 there will be 64 types of dc dc converters anyway i am not going into details of this because this part is not there in your syllabus but you should know this if you go for higher study in power electronics you may need this so this is all about our uh, non isolated dc dc converter these are all called non isolated dc dc converters because we don't have any isolation. Clear? We don't have any isolation in these circuits. If we have isolation, then it is called the isolated DC DC converter. I can share one slide which I have taught in the previous batch today uh, in this. Here we don't have the time to discuss all this, but I can share one whiteboard notes for you. Let me see. Just a minute. Okay, so another thing is uh, Ankit. Ankit. Yes, sir. Uh, are you informed that uh, today uh, NM sir will take some class on inverter? Yes, sir. I have talked with him from. So, whether all the students uh, are informed regarding this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, you must attend that class. In that class, uh, NM sir will discuss the inverter part because I don't, I will not get the time to discuss uh, all these inverters. But we will definitely discuss. There will be through three inverters uh, which he will discuss today. One is uh, called the post pole inverter, another is a uh, half bridge inverter another is the full bridge inverter so these three inverters will be there in your uh, syllabus okay so let me open that one whether this just a minute okay okay so i have one let me share this. Can you see this? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, you just see whether it is getting changed. The another image is coming. Or the same image. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where is where it's what changing. is written what what is written in the at the top? Back converter. No, no non isolated DC DC converter. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. So uh, the things we discussed today is uh, or uh, the last class also that is basically a non isolated converter. Now in isolated converter we should have an isolation like a transformer. The thing is the, that we have uh, drawn at the bottom, you just see like that. So 
what we need we need a power supply alternating uh, voltage power supply then we have a uh, transformer then we have the rectifier from that we will take the dc after that we will have the converter okay so this uh, as a whole is it's called a linear power supplies or sometimes it is called the switch mode power supplies. So in switch mode power supplies, the converter which we use is called the isolated DC-DC converter. Okay, so this is the divisions of DC-DC uh, converters. I will share all these notes to you. So there are two types of major categories are isolated and non-isolated. In non-isolated, I have already discussed bark boost and bark boost. So that is complete, I think. And you have understood clearly, isn't it? But uh, as I mentioned, there may be other variations as well. Besides this bark boost and bark boost, there, are, there may be other variations. Isn't it? So that part you have understood. Okay, so if you, if, you, if you understood, you can raise your hand also. Anyway, now uh, in the isolated converter, we have two types of converter. The converters having unidirectional excitation the converters having bidirectional excitation. And the unidirectional excitation, we have flyback converter and forward converter. Under the bidirectional excitation, we have push pull converter, half bridge converter, and pull bridge converter. This uh, converter, which is discussed under bidirectional excitation, this will have the similar circuit which you will study today for inverters. For inverters also, you will have the same categories like push-pull inverter, half-bridge inverter, and pull-bridge inverter. Okay. Not even in uh, inverter and DC-DC uh, converter. In rectifier also, you will get the same thing. And the circuit will also be remain same. Half-bridge and pull-bridge. Okay. So under the unidirectional converter, one very important converter is called the flyback converter, which is used in many uh, practical applications. It's called the fly flyback converter, which is basically derived from a path boost converter. Flyback converter is basically derived from a bark boost converter as I have drawn here. Can you see this? So what I have drawn at the top, uh, that is very known circuit, that is the bug boost converter, because you know that switch is uh, connected in series with the supply and the inductor is connected in the shunt branch and diode is connected in opposite direction. So this is, is nothing but a bug boost converter, well-known bug boost converter, which is basically a non-isolated DC-DC converter. Clear? Non-isolated DC-DC bug boost converter. Now, uh, this can be uh, drawn by an equivalent circuit like this. You just see what I have drawn here. I have changed the position of the diode only. You just see, nothing I have changed in the second circuit, in the B part of the circuit, I have changed nothing except the diode. Clear? The diode I have changed only. I can change like this. Okay? Because it will not uh, hamper the current flow in the switch off period. You just check. 
not only the diode, sorry, another change we made, that is the switch also. That is the position of the switch. Both the switch and diode now is drawn in the lower part of the circuit. Keeping all this consideration same. So that means in T on period, the diode should be reverse biased and the T off period, diode should be forward biased. In the original circuit, it was like that. If you can remember, it, it was like that. In the on period, the diode should be reverse biased. In the off period, diode should be forward biased. Here also, if you are changing the diode position, you have to change your switch such that these two conditions remains the same. So therefore, we have to change the switch position. Clear? Now, yes, sir. what we have done, we have cut the circuit as given in the green dotted line and we have rotated the circuit. We have cut down the circuit as given in the given by the green dotted line, and we have rotated the circuit. We can we can just we have changed the uh, changed the thing. So this will not hamper the any other uh, variable in the circuit. Only the polarity of V0, you can draw like that. Okay. Then, what we can do here, we can replace this portion, that is green dotted portion of the circuit, by a transformer having opposite polarity. Because transformer equivalent circuit means is basically a impedance, high impedance in parallel. Are you getting? The last portion is very important here how we can change this part by a opposite polarity transformer coils because so the transformer once you see uh, the transition from c to d that is very important now in c what we have we have an inductor l so that l i will replace yes, by sir. a transformer how we are doing like this, that I have drawn at the right. Because a transformer is basically, if we don't consider the series branch and the core loss component of resistance, then transformer is basically a inductor in parallel. That is a magnetizing inductor, magnetizing inductance. Okay, so that means this L will be equivalent to the magnetizing inductance of the transformer having negligible series impedance. Clear? So therefore that inductor is substituted. Hello? Sir, yes sir. Any any query here? Any query in the D part of the circuit, C to D transition? If 
you don't have, then uh, what I have drawn at the end, that is, uh, I have taken out the non-ideal part, that is in the magnetized inductance, and I have taken only the ideal part, N1 is to N2, as a transformer, ideal transformer, separately. So this is uh, called the flyback converter. So flyback converter is used to step up as well as step down. Okay, so if you don't have to discuss, then I'll discuss a little bit on the, this PWM. I have some time. I'll discuss the PWM part. Okay, so I will share this node. You just try to understand how uh, a non isolated DC DC bug boost converter can be converted to a isolated flyback converter having unipolar switching. So, next, uh, I will discuss. One more thing, there is the basics of PWM. PWM again will be discussed by Elencer also. But as I told you in the last class, what do you mean by PWM? Anybody? Pulse width modulation. Pulse width modulation. So that means what is pulse, pulse width? width? Follow what is false. Sir, duty cycle is sir, duty cycle is varied by that means pulse width means the on period, isn't it? The T on. Because uh, T on is the width of the positive pulse. Okay, so it's very simple. So let us uh, draw first the schematics. Then I will discuss how we are implementing this. Here we have a comparator. This is the reference voltage. And this is the actual output voltage. So output reference voltage and output actual output voltage. Here will generate the control voltage. Control voltage. We'll feed this to a, another comparator. Okay. Where we'll compare this control voltage with a carrier signal. And the carrier signal is basically can be a uh, can be a triangular one or can be a short wood one. Short wood waveform, I think you have seen in your signal system classes. Short wood waveform. That means we'll take one short wood waveform as a carrier signal and we'll compare that with a control signal, which controls the, the control signal we are getting we are getting generated from the from comparing the reference voltage and output voltage. And this will actually generate the switching control signal, which will go to the switch given in the uh, the converters, either DC DC converter or inverter or whatever, or rectifier, control rectifier. Okay, so this will generate the switching signals. 
clear so this is the schematic by which we generated the switching signal so everywhere uh, maybe in the rectif control rectifier or in the conver dc dc converter or inverter everywhere we will have some switch the switch will be either mosfet or igbt or bjt anything or thyristor so that means if we have the switch we have to control the switch okay to control the switch we have to generate some switching signal so this is the schematic for generating those switching signals next one okay is that clear now uh, what we have actually suppose we want some voltage uh, suppose that is our reference suppose v0 we want 12 volt but actually the v0 may not be 12 volt v0 may be different maybe 11 or 10 volts okay so that means the v control is basically the difference of these two now as if it's like a summer summing block like this okay so you have vor and you have v0 here you are getting the v control clear now in the comparator what we are doing we are taking that control signal and we are comparing that with the reference short tooth waveform which is also called the ferrium waveform so let me draw i don't know whether i i able to draw because it is difficult to draw any signals here okay anyway टाइम पीरियड तो चेंज होते होते ही जाते दिखते ओके एंड सपोज दिस इज द कंट्रोल सो दिस इज योर वी शॉर्ट टूथ एंड दिस इज योर v control these two you are comparing okay now the logic is now you have to set a logic here what is the logic the logic is when the control when the control is more than your short to the form value your You, you you want to send a switching pulse switching signal a positive pulse is that clear so that means suppose here up to this up to this and up to this these are the two conditions isn't it like this like this like this like this now uh as per this logic that means have you understood this logic when the control is more than the vst when v control is more than vst generate signal that means it will be on signal otherwise it will remain off okay so that means we'll get a positive pulse here then we'll get zero then again we will get positive pulse then again zero then again positive pulse zero positive pulse zero so this is how we will generate the switching signal so this is the positive pulse or we can say this t on and this portion is called the t off just a minute uh, you just uh, Wait for some time. Just come in.
Okay. So have you understood this point? Yes, sir. Now you see if uh, the control signal varies, that means if the control signal shift upward, what will happen? T on. Eh? T on is will be more. T on will be more. Okay, so that means it will increase the T on. Pulse width will increase. Hello. When the control signal will increase? Because control signal is nothing but V O R minus V O. V O R is constant. If V O is reduced, then that means when the difference is more, you what you want? You want to keep the output voltage to the reference voltage, near to the reference voltage. If the output voltage is reduced, control pulse will be increased, and that on time will increase by that you want to increase the output voltage. Is that clear? So it's like a closed loop control. So here you are taking the feedback. How much output voltage you are getting? And this is the reference voltage. Clear? So this is how uh, the pulse width control is implemented and if we want to uh, draw the expression between this pulse width or duty cycle with this control and this uh, this signal the sawtooth signal suppose if this is the part of the sawtooth okay and you have seen that this portion will be your T on, okay? And the rest of the portion will be T off, or we can write this total is basically T, okay? And here up to this, you have the control voltage, control, and up to this, you have the short tooth waveform at data maximum value. So you can write VST, VST cap. Cap means it's the maximum value of the short tooth waveform. So uh, from this triangle, we can write VT on by T on by. So there are two triangles. Okay. So from one triangle, we can write it's not working okay so t on by v control equals to t this is for the small triangle so that means this is the small triangle and from the larger triangle we can write this by vst cap okay so that means from this, we can write T on by T, which is also called the duty cycle, is nothing but V control by VST. So this is how the duty cycle is directly proportional to the V control voltage. So this is how we are establishing the fact. Okay. Any question? Yes, sir. Any question? Okay, so I will end the class here because if you don't have any question, I have to end the session. But before that, I will take the attendance. And as I told you, who are uh, absent today, I will deduct 10 marks from their internal uh, assessment marks. 
if we stop the 